Welcome to the Ash Wednesday service at Chancellor Baptist Church. We're so glad that you're watching and participating in this service. We're going to ask you to participate later on. And so I'm so glad that we are here on this Ash Wednesday. We know that the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 that when God spoke to Adam, he said this to Adam, For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Ash Wednesday is really derived from the practice of Christians for centuries of placing ashes on their head in the form of a cross as a way to remember and as a way to be reflective and repentant for our lives. We know that we are all ashes, will return to ashes as the Bible has indicated. Lent is about the 40 days excluding Sunday beginning today until the great grand celebration of Easter. The 40 days comes, of course, from the days of Jesus when he was in the wilderness and was tempted by the devil. This came, of course, right after his baptism, and we read from the fourth chapter of Matthew's Gospel. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, the devil said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended to him. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we know that you hate nothing that you have made, and we know that you forgive the sins of all of those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, we began the 40-day journey toward Easter. We enter the Lenten season to prepare ourselves to welcome the risen Christ with lives renewed by the breath of His Holy Spirit. During this season, we dedicate ourselves to meditate upon the Scriptures and to continue the conversation in daily prayer with our Lord and Savior. We seek to be more faithful disciples of Christ. To this end, let us worship the Lord. The first scripture reading comes from Joel, chapter 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm, on my holy hill, let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, like a dawn spreading across the mountains. A large and mighty arms comes, such as never was of old, nor ever will be in ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, 
return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. The second Bible reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, at, starting at verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled. To God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. Uh, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We have heard from the prophet Joel, who lived before Jesus came to this earth. We have heard words from the apostle Paul, who met the risen Lord on the road to Damascus. We now hear again from one who lived in the day of Jesus, Matthew from the sixth chapter. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And then in verse 19, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. On this Ash Wednesday, we think of Lent as a season of reflection. It is a season of prayer. It is a season of fasting. It is a season of reflecting upon our own life, our own mortality, and our own sinfulness. Five points to share with you about this day. Three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, give us the temptation experience of Jesus. You will recall that right before this temptation experience of Jesus was his baptism. And then the Spirit, we read, drove Jesus into the wilderness for these 40 days. Imagine 40 days in the Judean wilderness, barren, hot. Jesus didn't have food to eat during this time. But it was a, such a significant and important moment in the life of Jesus and obviously in our lives as well because it was in those 40 days that Jesus dealt with the devil. When the devil approached him, the devil said, look, I have great power that I will give you. God has already given you power. All that you need to do is to bow down before me or turn stones into bread. 
But Jesus knew that his whole ministry was going to come out of those 40 days. 40 days is really important. It is a significant time. And the message, I believe, of Jesus in the wilderness is that obviously he overcame the temptations that the devil provided him. And of course, we know that Jesus would. But it was also a message to Satan that whatever power Satan had, the power of Jesus, the power of God, was far greater than the power of Satan. The power of God is always greater. Secondly, wilderness is a frame of mind as well as a landscape. We see it in the life of Jesus as a landscape, but it was also more than that because it was about Jesus' heart. So for you and I, we know that we experience wilderness, wildernesses in our uh, life, whether that be in relationships or whether that be health issues, whether that be financial issues, family concerns, we know that that's a part of where we live. But wilderness as a frame of mind provides us with an opportunity to sit down alone and to sit in silence and to be without headphones, to be without tablets, to be without screens, to be without cell phones, to be without books, or if we read newspapers, to be without newspapers. And to sit in silence and to say to God, Oh God, we want to be with you, and we ask, I ask, O oh Lord, that you come to me and speak to me. In the wilderness is so often when we find God and experience the fullness of who he is. Thirdly, in this season of Lent, we are called to reflect upon what might we give up because we are preoccupied by all of our activities. We are preoccupied by events in our lives and by things that we like to do. When we give up our preoccupation, it allows us to focus more upon God, upon Jesus, and upon the Holy Spirit. Because God wants to connect with us. God wants to be central to our lives. As Jesus said, this, we are called to seek the kingdom of God first. I recently read of the book, Girl Meets God. When this young woman had just become a believer and she was so anxious to begin the practice of Lent, the six weeks, the 40 days excluding Sundays before Easter. And she was not successful at this, so she went to her pastor and said to him, look, I feel like I'm not giving up something. What can I do? Well, the pastor knew that this young woman was an avid reader. She always had a book or a screen in front of her in which she was reading a book. And the pastor, in the moment of silence, said to her, would you consider giving up reading for six weeks? The young woman just could not believe what the pastor said to her because she suddenly recoiled in her stomach and in her spirit that how could she ever give up reading for six weeks in the season of Lent? You know, we all have distractions. We all have pacifiers. We all have activities that we use to move away from God. What if we gave up one of those during this season of Lent in order that we could become closer to God? Wildernesses may be scary, but that doesn't make it a bad place. We see in the Bible that wilderness experiences are holy moments, holy experiences. Whether it was in the wilderness temptation experience of Jesus, whether it was the children of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness, and we know that that was a time of transition for those children of Israel because those who had come up out of Egypt were not allowed by God to enter into the promised land because they needed to be people of who were new and who were different. Lastly, I would encourage you during this season of Lent that you would use this time to prepare for your new pastor. 
We don't know when that day will be yet, but we do know that the search team is working on that under God's direction. And maybe this season of Lent is a time of prayer for whoever that new pastor will be, to pray and ask God to work in his life and in his heart, and also to ask God to work in the life of this congregation, this body, to openly receive and to engage with the new pastor when he arrives. Let us offer to God our prayers. We come to God both in hope and sometimes in fear. And each day we deal with so much in life. Let us take the 40 days that we are beginning with today to look hard into our own lives, into our own spirits, into our own sinfulness, and to see what we cover up. And we ask that God will bring his light, his salvation, more fully into the dark places of our lives. We're going to ask now that we join together in prayer. I will give some petitions for prayer, and at the end of those, if you will respond, by saying, hear our prayer, O Lord. So let us pray together. That as disciples of Christ, Lord, that we might start using our hands, our feet, our money, our time, our energy for the good of the poor. Let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. That citizens everywhere may realize that care for their neighbor consists of more than the mere giving of money. Let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For the needy, that they may not have to maintain despondent and to be alone. Let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For all of us, that we may be honest enough to admit what we are selfish about and what we can do to remedy our lack of love. Let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For those who share Christ's charity towards sinners, let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, we pledge to you to take up the cross of life. We came from the earth and we will go back to it. But in the meantime, Lord, beginning with these 40 days, we will try to live here and make it a better home for all of your children. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Hear the good news of God's reconciling love toward all and believe. Through Christ, God chose to reconcile the whole universe, making peace through the shedding of Christ's blood upon the cross, to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, through Christ alone. Let's pray. Holy God, through the discipline of these 40 days, Make your spirit's cleansing fire burn within us. Lift us from the dying embers of our inattention. Mark us with the sign of your holy passion. Make us ready to respond to the call of Jesus Christ. Amen.